How's the punters? Welcome back to the Best Sports Betting Podcast. Today we're going to be unpacking all the Premier League results from the weekend. What a weekend of sports it was. We're going to be taking a look at some of the results from the F1 USA, uh, the T20, and then we're going to be having a look ahead at the EPL and T20 fixtures coming up this week. Simon, what a weekend of sports. Uh, Premier League was where all the action was, starting with Chelsea and their 7-0 win over Norwich. Huge win for them there. Yeah, absolutely massive. And um, yeah, who would have thought we would have seen a, a, nearly a, a scoreline nearly as big on Sunday with um, obviously Man United losing 5-0 to the hands of, in the hands of Liverpool. Really could have been a, a big one there. Now, we'll unpack that fixture in a bit. But on Friday, I fancied Aston or I fancied Arsenal against Aston Villa. I thought that was quite a quite a solid strike. Arsenal coming through with a very comfortable 3-1 win over a, a lackluster mm. Aston Villa there. Then other results on, on Saturday, we had Manchester City beating Brighton 4-1. Not uh, kind of expected there. And uh, we had Newcastle getting a surprise result at Crystal Palace. Didn't see that one coming. Sure. I mean, that was an absolute steal. Um, the Palace were absolutely dominant from beginning to, to end. I mean, it was it really was very, very lucky, I think, that Newcastle um, got away with a point there. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, January, yeah, I think, really can't come soon enough for Newcastle. Obviously, we're going to be looking at some, some big buys, I'd imagine. And, uh, sure, after... After a bit of a rocky game against Spurs and in this one, I think um, Newcastle are, are not looking good. So I think um, yeah, January January is gonna is, is, is well needed. Yeah, definitely gonna be look to, uh, looking at fading Newcastle in all the upcoming games. They're just yeah, they're, they're not looking good. They, as you said, they got dominated there, uh, but lucky to walk away with a point. Then uh, Watford beating Everton. That was also quite a talking point. Five two playing at uh, playing in uh, in Liverpool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think I can't remember Watford scoring five goals against any Premier League team. Never, never mind away from home against Everton, who are obviously a, a top half side. So that was that was a really, really um, impressive result from them. Yeah, once again, Everton, my bogey team. There, just uh, <laughs> if I back them, I'm glad <laughs> yeah. I didn't back them there. But you know, that's that's one of those places or one of those points where I would have backed them and they would have just uh, I would have lost all my bets. Uh, that I include them in, and then uh, Leicester beating Brentford. Brentford's kind of good run finally coming to to an end against Leicester there. Too yeah, well. I mean, I, I know you thought maybe maybe getting on side with with Brentford there um, might have been an option with a draw no bet. So, but I think that was priced about right for me. I mean, as I said, I've been very bullish about Brentford this season, but at the same time, you know, Leicester are a good side. I think um, you know them sort of both being seventeen to ten. With, with with Brentford playing at home made a lot of sense to me, so I think I think that's that's a kind of expected result as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it was a, it was a very close game. I think uh, could have mm. gone either way. I think a draw probably sure. would have been the the best results um, considering how the game went. But but yeah. Leicester managing to to edge that one. Then West Ham beating Spurs. Um, we we like West Ham. We liked them in that spot. They they managed yeah. to get a one 0 win over Spurs. Yeah, obviously it was um, an interesting London derby that, um, and I think I think not exactly an unexpected result. I mean, West Ham pretty solid at home. I think um, you know I suppose my, I would have more expected perhaps a draw in that match, but um, yeah, good good result for West Ham in the end, getting the three points. Yeah, I suppose dominating position, but just not doing anything with it. Yeah. Uh, very disappointing for them, and another team that uh, one might start looking at fading going forward. And then uh, we had the big one, United Liverpool. Man, what a game! I watched uh, one of the. I watched the oh I watched eighty minutes of it oh, probably seventy five minutes I turned off. <laughs> Not that I'm a United fan, but the game was done and they were just tapping the ball around. What a what an opening salvo from Liverpool two 0 in the first I think it was fifteen minutes or something. I, d- I don't know what United's defense was doing there. It was just uh, it was atrocious defending. Yeah, it was absolutely it was it was appalling actually. I mean that was the biggest win for Liverpool actually. At, at Old Trafford since 1895, so it really was quite an historic win. United created a few chances early on, um, but I mean, after Mo Salah scored his third goal, uh, sorry, his first goal, which was the third goal for for, for Liverpool, so that was put, in, put them up three love. Um, I mean, it was a long way back for United. Um, I mean, their defence was just crumbling minute by minute. I think I think they looked pretty disorganised at the start of the match, but I mean by by the latter stages of the second half, there was, I don't think, much defence to speak of at all. Um, I could just see Fergie about to have a stroke up in the, st- yeah, <laughs> up in the stands. He probably could watching. have come onto the pitch and done a better better job than some of the yeah. United defenders. Sure. I was just thinking when it, you know, obviously that, that second goal from, from Salah in, in, in the fifth minute, I think it was, of, of, of extra time or of injury time in the first half. I thought, sure, it's going to take Fergie to kind of go down to the dugout and give a sort of Al Capone-style 
uh, half, you know, halftime talk to, to, to bring them back, but uh, it was not to be. I mean, Liverpool notched a goal, I think, in the first five or six minutes of the second half again through Salah. So he actually scored an uninterrupted hat trick, which you which you don't see that often. Yeah, um, very, very no quick hat trick as well. It was, uh, I think, it, what you call it, like a 12 or something minute hat trick where. Yes, something was, absolutely. Or eight minute hat trick, or you know, with very, very quick coming in there. But you know, there there are a lot of amazing stats to come out of this game. Obviously, um, you know, I mean, Liverpool, I mean, United don't often lose five five nil at home. But the one that really actually makes me pay attention is Liverpool have scored three goals in all eight of their away games this season. I mean, that is quite something. I mean, can you imagine the odds? I mean, that's not mm. really a market that, that the bookies would, would, would necessarily put up. But, I mean, can you imagine the odds of that? I mean, that happening even two or three times in a season is is, is, is quite incredible for a team. So, three away goals in every single game, first eight, is is incredible. Um, I must say, I don't, I don't normally wait the 20 minutes or so, you know, for the post-match interviews with the managers. But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't miss this one with, with Klopp and Solskjaer. Um, <laughs> I didn't bother honestly I, I turned off uh, 5 mil. I, c- I probably could have turned off I thought I was hoping it was I'm sorry United fans but I was hoping it was going to get even uglier I wanted to see more goals I wanted to see how far we could get and uh, you know 4-0 half time and then just the one goal yeah. in the second half I was looking at backing unders I probably should have backed unders. I was looking at under yeah. six and a half, and I was getting, and there was some really nice odds. I had a feeling. I had a feeling at, at the four 0 it was going to end five two. I thought that that uh, that United would outscore Liverpool by a goal, but there would be slightly less goals. So that that would have been my. I would have said five two at the halfway point, but obviously that wasn't to be. But uh, yeah, I mean, just going back to that that post match interview. I mean, Klopp's new set of teeth, which I don't know if you've noticed, he's definitely got caps now. And his teeth were looking whiter than ever. He sort of <laughs> grinned from ear to ear to ear. But I must say, Solskjaer did take it on the chin. I mean, he didn't blame anyone but himself for, for that sort of historic I would, I would blame his players, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't know how much... I mean, look, there's obviously the manager's going to have to take a lot of blame. But, I yeah. mean, gosh, those players, yeah. like, what a, what well, a they terrible went, they performance. Went, they weren't tracking back. I mean, they just, as I said, in the second half, there was just no defense to speak of. Um, but obviously now, of course, there are already rumors circulating about him being replaced before the games against the game against Spurs on the weekend. So they've now got to go to, um, <laughs> got to, go to London to face Spurs, which uh, I'm quite interested to see that United are favorites for. So we'll talk, talk about that in a minute, but that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Yeah, so I mean, a great, great weekend of football. Really enjoyed it. Uh, we 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 fancied Liverpool there. It was it was our yeah. one of our best. Uh, the odds just weren't quite for me at thirteen to ten, but I, I certainly was not siding with United there. Yeah, uh, so so good good results for us. I think uh, one of the the better sort of weekends we've had when it comes to <laughs> comes to football. Then uh, let's have a quick chat about the uh, USA. If uh, well, the Formula One USA. Yeah, that was that was actually an interesting. And look, it's if you look at the results, you're going to say, "Oh, wow, it was an interesting race." But it was one of those races where you know one team got their their tactics, I think, slightly better than another, and it, it did make for an interesting race. Uh, Red Bull Red Bull came first and second through Verstappen and, and Perez, respectively. Um, but the, I suppose the first sort of you know uh, the F1 is always it's always a weekend, you know. So you got you got to look at everything from qualifying to the actual race. And I suppose the first sort of small surprise came. When Verstappen um, came in two tenths of a second ahead of Hamilton in qualifying, um, especially seeing that Mercedes have been marginally faster the last two weeks or the last two races, and then on Sunday in the actual race, um, Mercedes kept out Hamilton longer on his, his first and second set of tires. So obviously the, the idea there being that he would have a fresher pair of tires for the first, you know, the last uh, the final few laps. But um, you know. Even though Verstappen's tyres were nine laps older at that point, he was actually able to keep Hamilton at bay through some really, really good driving. Um, I mean, Hamilton was making up about half a second per lap on on, on Verstappen. But, you know, no sooner had Hamilton kind of gained on him than, than that, that Verstappen would then claw back just a few tenths of a second. And it just made the made the gap. The gap was, was getting smaller, but not smaller quick enough um, for Hamilton to obviously make up that time at the end. So it really was actually really, really good, good racing from, from Verstappen. And I mean, normally in these circumstances, Ham- Mercedes would leave Hamilton enough time for him to catch the leader and overtake, but Verstappen held out. And um, I don't think Mercedes got their tactics wrong. It was just more case of Verstappen doing better than expected on his older tyres, and obviously Hamilton not being able to close the gap fast enough. Yeah, picking good up a, a good win and uh, yeah. keep, keeping the season interesting. Absolutely. Then there was some some Champions League, which was kind of overshadowed by the, the Premier League results. Not too much to chat about. Most of the big teams winning. I think the big talking point would be Liverpool beating Atletico 
Um, yeah, but, uh, there was some. You know, it was it was interesting because on Tuesday it was it was seriously a day for the punters. Every single favourite mm. won, and there were no draws, which is very very unusual in the Champions League. Um, Liverpool, yeah, most United, of them won pretty big as well. Lots of goals. Yeah, which, which, yeah, which punters I mean, love. Absolutely. So I mean, Liverpool, United, and PSG kind of had scrappy matches um, where they kind of had to fight for their three points. But then, you know, Bayern, Chelsea, Real Madrid, and City sort of made things look a lot easier. Well, even um, even, on, even on the Wednesday, the the favourites all all picked mm. up wins. You know, Barcelona winning Bayern away from home with a big win. Chelsea, you know, even yeah, United managing to win. I'm 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 really enjoying seeing Chelsea do so well. You know, just going back to the EPL very quickly. Um, I mean, I, I can't honestly see a world where Man City don't have a big say in the title race, but they always do. But I really hope Liverpool and Chelsea can kind of mm. find a gap at the top, and and there's a sort of duel between those two teams for the for the title in the final weeks. So I think that would be great. Yeah, still still early in the season, nine games played. So yeah, you know, hopefully the picture becomes clearer closer to Christmas. Yeah, and uh, hopefully it's it's still interesting. Uh, kind of hopefully as, as as close as it is now. Then T Twenty uh, South Africa just uh, not 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 doing well. Uh, we didn't expect them to do very well. They they got handily beaten by Australia on, on Saturday, um, not scoring very much yeah. runs to defend. I mean, one hundred and eighteen in the twenty. Yeah, look, overs. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a classic top order collapse in in dramatic style um against australia um Bavuma and Dukak both made almost no contributions which is never never a good start and then markram kind of stayed innings a little bit but look 118 was always going to be incredibly tough to defend we actually started quite well bowling um we kept the run rate reason i mean look defending six and over is not easy but we get the run rate down and we did get a couple of early wickets but you know i think the australians you know, it might have come down to the final over, but there's no doubt the Aussies knew that yeah, they needed six and over. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you might say, oh, well, it went down to the final over, but at the end of the day, they knew they needed to score not necessarily even always a boundary and over, and then just a couple singles, and that's it. And they were happy to do that. Um, so yeah, It's, it's you know, what they needed to do, you know, give themselves some practice, you know, get right, some, get they some play. Right, they didn't want to have Tonk. I mean, they had wickets in hand, but they certainly were going to go out there and slog when they didn't need to. You know, they weren't chasing 10, 11, 12 and over. Um, I must say one takeaway, though, from that from that match. I I know his his pedigree and experience is, is not quite at the level of Rabada and Shamsi, but I think Norky is one of our most promising bowlers at the moment. I think I think we're going to see good things from him. Um, I wouldn't. I, I would like. To, um, I think I might have a couple of uh, you know bowler of the bowler of the uh, best bowler of best figures for South Africa in a couple of these T Twenty matches because he's he's looking really really good. I must say. Um, and yeah, I think I think that we actually have a pretty good chance against against West Indies today. I must say. Yeah, well, West that, West Indies who who <laughs> went to who scored fifty five runs all out against the against the England. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was. Oh, we were actually just chatting a bit quickly about before uh, before the podcast about this, Robert. I just think um, the West Indies team. It's you know they, they've got a couple of players like Gale and and um, and Simmons who who are, are good batsmen. But I just think that our bowling attack is a lot stronger than theirs. And I think if we just get even just one of De Kock and Bavuma or Markram to really put in a good a good bat. I think we'll. I think we could actually beat them quite easily. So I actually looked at this. The odds. The odds were. It was. It was even money on 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 South Africa. And now I see there has been a bit of money come for South Africa. So now it's sort of nine to ten on both sides. So I necessarily think there's value there. I think this would be could be a quite a close one. But I would definitely favour South Africa over West Indies in this match. Yeah. So they're playing at twelve thirty today mm. or twelve o'clock today. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be uh, an interesting match to watch. I think South Africa should win this one. Mm. Um, I, I fancy South Africa here. Had a pretty solid strikeout take on that, to be honest. I don't, I don't. See... Look, we could lose yeah. it, but I think, I think we're a better overall team than than the West Indies. Yeah, I, as I said, I, I just think, I think if we bowl like we did against Australia, which really wasn't bad, um, I just think we would, we would, we were defending a small total. But if we bowl even just the same as we bowl against Australia, and we bat slightly better, just one one player sort of anchors our innings. I think, I think we could beat them quite easily, honestly. Then there was the India Pakistan match, which I caught when I switched off. Well, I was, I, was, I, was, I was switching between the United game and that. I was mostly on the United game, though. But mm. uh, I did switch over to that to watch uh, Pakistan walk home to a quite a stunning victory over, over India. They won by 10 wickets, um, chasing yeah. down 151. So a very big win for them there over, over the tournament favorites, uh, which is kind of a mix. It should mix up the betting nicely. Uh, you know, it, should. it should. 
think uh, Pakistan are going to get a lot more respect now. Uh, India's still favourites yeah. at 3.4 after that. Uh, yeah. Pakistan are up to 10 to 1. South Africa is still 9. Not too much has changed there, to be honest. But um, yeah, it might be a team that's worth backing is uh, Pakistan moving forward. They're going to be playing uh, today. Or is this, I think they're playing today. Yeah, they're playing, uh, they're playing um, New Zealand today. So that's going to be an interesting one. They are one Yes, that's right. That's, yeah, that's the late game. That's yeah. That's at four o'clock, and then going on to the weekend, we've got some some nice matches actually. Um, Scotland and Namibia is a, a particular highlight on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> we've got South Africa and Sri Lanka um, on Saturday, as well as England, England, Australia. So I think you know once those two matches kind of mm. go underway, I think that, I think we'll really see the tournament kind of getting into full swing. Yeah, um, I think so England Australia is going to be a cracker. That should be a goodie. That should absolutely be, be a goodie. But yeah, I fancy the approaches today. I think. I think, and it's because of the bowling attack. Um, I think we're going to miss having Faf. Um, he always anchors our side, and he's just that guy just sees the ball like a basketball. It's incredible, um, and his strike rate is just so good. But I think we've got a we've got a good enough bunch of bowlers. And as I said, I think the West Indies batting lineup is is not that intimidating, especially if we can get uh, Gale and Simmons out early. I think I think we get a very good chance. I'm just uh, striking a bet here. I'm going to be taking South Africa to win. I'm going to take England to win tomorrow, and I'm going to be taking Australia to beat Sri Lanka. On Here we go. Thursday. Um, nice little treble. Yeah, putting 447 is going to return 1,440. So a nice return, 3.2 there. Let me put that one through uh, before, while, we, while we're on the podcast before I forget about it. Hopefully South Africa don't uh, don't bust that one out early. Nah, then, uh, sure we can do it. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Then uh, let's jump over to some of the Premier League matches taking place this weekend. Mm. Uh, it's maybe not as exciting. We don't have a, a Super Sunday Nothing, nothing quite as tantalizing as we had last weekend. Yeah, I mean, something tells me that the talking points are not going to be quite <laughs> what they will be, or that they were today, obviously next week. Um, but I think United's trip to, to face Spurs is obviously something mm. that everyone's going to want to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, as, as, I, as I alluded to earlier, I'm quite intrigued to see United 14 to 10 favorites here. Um, I mean, look, Spurs are only one point above them on the table, but uh, I am not sure that this United side has the bounce back quality that we've. No, they you know, don't. That, that's that's clearly been factored into the price. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. There's no ways that United would be favourite here. That it would probably be a seventy to ten a side match, or maybe Spurs slight favourites. But there's no ways that 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 after that loss, um, that 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 loss against Liverpool has 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 brought United's price down, which I'm not sure about. Yeah, these are these um, are two teams that are just in really poor form at the moment. Uh, however, I feel Spurs have been playing a lot better, even though they haven't been picking up the results. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I can't look past them for a result here, especially against a, a United side. Look, there's going to be a reaction, of course, but I, just, just based uh, on how they got torn apart. I mean, I must like, say, I, li- I really like the draw here, and that's that's for a because I think it look it's going to be tighter than the odds suggest. I think that United should not be favourites here. I think it should be. Well, Dead we'll even, or maybe slight, slight Spurs favourites here, but but three point five five on the draw um, doesn't look a bad bet at all. Um, uh, as I said, I can't obviously make a case for United as favourites, but even against an admittedly average Spurs side, I think that I think that the draw the draw looks looks to be the yeah. better. Three point seven over on Gbet, so it might be a yeah, that's a nice, that's nice, nice time to have a yeah. stock there. Then we've got uh, Leicester taking on Arsenal. Not interested in taking a bet there. I can't really separate those two. I think that will probably end up in a in a draw, uh, Liverpool should have more than enough to beat Brighton. I think I'll pop that as a as a banker in an accumulator. Just just how they're looking. I mean, maybe Liverpool on the handicap even. Mm. Um, you probably get some some decent odds there. City against Palace. Uh, don't see City losing to Palace, uh, but one point one six. I'm not sure if I should be including that in my accumulators. I'm not going to. A little bit too short. Burnley Brentford. Uh, transport Brentford to. Maybe pick up a result there. I'm not so certain, so I'm not going to be betting on that one. And then Newcastle, Chelsea. This is a great spot to back Chelsea. Great spot. Oh, to absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, look, after last week's performance against Palace, I honestly, I really worry for Newcastle. For the meantime, obviously, look, January comes could be a completely different ball game, but uh, I wouldn't put anyone off backing Chelsea on the minus one, which is at even money. And what you can also, if you know, if you're not too confident on on Chelsea scoring lots of goals, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but you can also back them to win to nil, which look, okay, I know they're playing against Newcastle in, on their home ground with 70,000 fans, but I still think that a win to nil at 2.17 is also probably a fairly safe bet, despite the home advantage for Newcastle. So I would take Chelsea minus one or Chelsea win to nil. 
Um, I think I think those are both. Good yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Ch- that Chelsea minus one. Um, not, mm, not too much value money. on on Chelsea and over one point five. Just having a look here. Um, yeah. uh, maybe Chelsea to win an over two point five. Uh, I think that might be. Mm. That's also about even money. But uh, I'm going to put those two in an accumulator. I'm going to take Liverpool and Chelsea. They're very short. They're short favourites, but they are the, on, the teams that are on fire at the moment. Yeah. And you're going to get 1.73, 1.74 on that. Uh, if you want to be a little bit uh, more kind of take a bit more of a chance, put in Man City there, uh, and that will will boost those odds up for you as well. Giving taking you over even money, you might actually take that, even though I don't like backing sides at 1.16. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oof. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave City out of that one. So let me let me put 500 bucks on uh, on this 500 rand in return. 869 rand taking Liverpool and Chelsea. Pop that one through. So I've got a couple of cricket bets and uh, I've got some some football a football double here. Simon, what are your fancies for the weekend? I think yeah, I might actually take a, a long shot treble and actually back. I'm a, I, I was one of this. I'm gonna back South Africa. You can, you put this into the bets, of Robin. Tell me what the odds are. I'm gonna back. South Africa to win at 12 o'clock against um okay, give against me a second, West Indies. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me just find his markets. So, so you want South Africa to win against the West Indies. And then Chelsea minus one. Okay. Let's and a United Spurs draw. Chelsea minus one. Let's see if I can find that um, over on GBets. Chelsea minus one. They've got lots okay. of markets here, Simon. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just... Yeah, so, a uh, handicap, know, wait, so now I've got second half handicap. Uh, do I have a first half handicap here? It should be even money. I, I think I had a look at it earlier. And it was okay. Uh, here we go. Wait, now these are cards. I'm finding everything but the, the <laughs> handicap. You know, gosh, there's so many markets. So if you guys are looking for markets, go over to go over to GBets. Uh, let's see, let's see. So what was the other one that you wanted? South Africa, South Africa to win, Chelsea minus one, and United Spurs draw. United Spurs draw. Okay, so I'm going to look for a kind of similar market that I can... Oh, here we go. Three-way handicap. Chelsea minus one, 2.05. And then you wanted uh, a draw with uh, United. United and Spurs, yeah. Let's pop that one in as well and see what we're going to get. Here we go. It's going to pay nicely. Um, You're getting 13.8. 13.9 okay. really. So, so that's, that's, look, it's a, it's a long shot, but um, I, I like that. It's that's a, it's a cheeky cheeky long shot treble. Uh, I think it's got a good sneaky shot. Sneaky 50 Rand on that. It's going to return yeah. 694 Rand, and then you get a 20 Rand uh, accumulator bonus with GBets as well. So you're going to get 700 bucks. Let me put that one through. Hopefully, uh, we'll be, be smiling after that one. I think the draw yeah. there is the... The, the big one sure look it's it's, it's just a bit of a, a bit of a value pick i think i think that uh it's it's going to be hard to separate that look i mean i could see spurs you know beating united 3-0 quite easily as well so let's just see uh, but i think i think it's a bit of value on the draw there all right thanks simon i think that's where we're going to call it today it's been a fun one we might be doing a, another live stream this weekend for guys who didn't tune in we had a uh, a casino games live stream on gbets where we were playing evolution games some of the other games bet construct whatnot this weekend we're hoping to be playing over on super bets who have pragmatic slots habanero all of those slots and games that you don't find at other casinos uh, i will be confirming that on the channel a bit closer to the weekend but it would if it if it does happen it's going to be on saturday and uh, super bets are, are keen on giving us some some nice prizes to give away there as well so guys thanks for tuning in to the best sports betting podcast and we'll catch you in the next one Have a good one. Cheers.